So in this video, we're picking up where we left off with the terrain detailing workflow. You can see me just downloading a set of gravel textures from Quixel and setting up a new height field material layer there. And uh, this is where we're going to start thinking about how we can begin to create the mask for the screen layer, which is a little bit more involved uh, than uh, the other layers that we've created so far. So I'm just going to make a little bit of space down here and uh, start to think about which masks I need to use. And I'm going to begin with the uh, the cliff layer because uh, it kind of makes sense that if you're going to have scree or rock fall, it's going to happen on the just below the steepest parts of the slopes. And what I'm going to do is just start by searching for height field slump and putting down the height field slump node. So this is a native uh, a native node in Houdini, which is really great. And it basically allows you to flow uh, a specific uh, mask uh, across the terrain. Uh, which makes it ideal for things like falling rocks um, since they tend to be very localized to areas of sort of exposed rock that may have eroded away. So I'm going to reduce the iterations quite substantially and then just sort of inch them up bit by bit. What I'm looking for is pools just correcting, collecting around the base of the cliffs. But we can see it's really flowing into all of the kind of crevices and cracks of this uh, sort of sand dune or into all of the peak troughs of the uh, the sand dunes there, which wouldn't really happen. It would, it would get more embedded. So we're going to use the repose angle, um, which will cause this to kind of get stuck uh, a little bit sooner. Um, there we go. So that's nice. It's now starting to sort of creep up to the, uh, to the edges of all the cliffs. Uh, and I think it's giving us a sort of natural uh, distribution for where, where all of these kind of rock and gravel would accumulate. And I'm just going to play with the iterations again and sort of eyeball it for a little moment. Okay. <clears throat> so I think I'm reasonably happy with that for the time being. Let's just try wiring that into our height field material node. Toggle on mask again. Let's see what we end up with. And we're ending up with something a little bit peculiar. And uh, actually, I've just remembered why that is. What we need to do is we need to put down a height field remap between slump and material. And we need to compute the range. And we can see, ah, I also need to set the layers to remap to mask. Mask. So we're going to compute the range. And you can see that actually the input goes between 0 and 8. So we're going to put that between, to remap that to 0 to 1. And then that forces us to sort of wiggle this ramp a little bit as well to get the result we're after. Okay, so that's starting to uh, feel quite nice, I would say. Um, the placement is fairly reasonable. Um, I quite like it, but uh, I think we can do better. So what I'm going to do now is just introduce you to uh, a node that uh, was built for Project Pegasus, uh, which is called Layer Slump. So layer slump is very much like a slump. Um, and the best way of thinking about the slump is that it advects the mask across the, the height field. And that means it sort of follows the gradient um, downhill in the case of the slump. Uh, but the slump can do a lot more. It can advect things up slopes uh, or actually in sort of arbitrary directions according to a mask, uh, if you configure it correctly. And the layer slump uh, basically sort of facilitates that workflow a little bit more easily. So I'm going to put down a, another height field mask by feature. And this one is going to grab the occlusion. And we're going to wiggle this until we get really high frequency information about where sort of little occluded pockets. So I'm going to decrease the view distance and modify the ramp. I'm going to flip the ramp vertically. Okay. I'm going to keep playing with this until I'm sort of getting the portions of the uh, terrain that most interest me. Try a different profile, like shop. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I like that. There we go. Okay. So this is what I was after, a, a, a mask which essentially picks out all of the kind of uh, sort of occluded, micro-occluded areas. And then 
I'm going to go Hetfield Popular and rename this. We're going to call this Pockets. <clears throat> and then we're going to take the output of the, the slump and wire that into the layer slump, the left input. And then we're going to wire our new layer into the right input. And I'm going to say layer to slump, mask, slump, influencing layer, influencing layer pockets. Okay. And now if I decrease the iterations to zero, we have our original mask. But if I slowly wiggle this up, we're going to see something interesting happen. Is it's effectively kind of breaking that mask uh, up, uh, sort of spreading it. Um, and right now it's doing the inverse of what I want. It's actually sort of spreading it to the peaks. And you can look closely. So I'm going to go and invert the direction. What we can see there is it's now kind of picking out all those little holes and pockets. It sort of creeps out. There we go. And I want it to creep out a fair bit, like so. And then I'm going to go back to the original slump and decrease the repose angle allowing it to slide down a bit further. I'm going to go to the occlusion, try to decrease the, the view distance. And there we go, decreasing it to five has got me to exactly where I wanted to get to. We're now going to plug the output of the layer slump into the height field remap and compute range once more and then set the output min and max. Okay. So it's a pretty interesting looking mask at this point. And I'm just going to go to this slump and increase the repose angle. I'm going to go to the layer slump and increase the repose angle there ever so slightly too. Or maybe not. Maybe I'll decrease the spread iterations. Just playing with it until I get what I'm after. And then if I go to the height field remap, I can adjust this, this ramp. What I really want is a slightly more sparse kind of map with lots of nice high frequency detail in it. Something like something like this will, will probably do. So let's have a look at the height field material, see what we're getting. And yeah, this is this is pretty nice. Um, we're getting rockfall uh, like we were previously, whereas before it felt fairly uniform and sort of soft almost. Um, after we were, we sort of modulated that slump mask by the occlusion, uh, we end up with, with uh, uh, something that feels a bit more complex and natural uh, with the uh, the scree kind of filling in the crevices and cracks a little bit more readily. Um, we're currently using the, the actual cliffs here, but what we could do as well is we could just go ahead and put down another mask by feature. Like so. Oops. And we can go ahead and do a new slope mask and just kind of define exactly which areas are going to have rockfall and then see what, see what result that gives us. Play with it some more. I feel like the softer fall off is actually working in our favor here. So I think I'm going to go with something like that. And let's remap. more of a play. So yeah, maybe we can introduce a bit more, some more gravelly pockets around the place. Let's have a look again. And it's really up to you how much gravel and rockfall you want to introduce. Um, but I think the, the layer slump feature has quite a nice, adds quite a nice sort of uh, dimension to that controller. Yeah. Okay. So We've introduced some some gravel, um, and I'm fairly happy with how that's how, how that's gone. Um, I think I want to just tint the rocks, uh, the cliffs, to be a bit darker. So I'm going to put down another PE height field tint. We can simply use the same mask that was applied for the uh, cliffs. Go to that tint and sort of darken it down a bit. Let's have a little look at that in conjunction with the gravel. So I think that might be yes, possibly okay, maybe a bit dark. Then I'll put down uh, another height field tint after the gravel. 
And the goal of this one is really just to kind of bring the uh, bring the the gravel a bit more into the same kind of range as the the rest of the scene without without darkening it too much because I do think it should be a bit brighter. So I just want to warm it up slightly, darken it ever so slightly. I think something like that is uh, is possibly good to go. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, it's not looking too bad. Um, and we've kind of, I think, dealt with all of the uh, procedural detailing features that we need to add at this stage. So the last thing I'm going to do, uh, which is really going to make the terrain pop, is I'm just going to put down a one last P height field tint. I'm going to put down one more height field mask by feature, like so. And we're going to go to that mask by feature. I'm going to turn off slope and turn on the mask by occlusion. <clears throat> we find the height field visualized so we can see what that mask contains. There we go. So, yep, just getting the occlusion. And um, I'm going to try doing a sort of round profile, like so. Yeah, I think so. Nice round profile. We can play with this in a minute. We can change the view distance. Yep, decrease that a little bit. We can try wire this into our tint. I'm going to do a gradient. Again, we're going to remove the mask from the mask channel. I'm going to use that for the ramp. Okay. So that's pretty interesting, but <laughs> not quite right for our sort of more realistic style that we're going for. So I'm just going to go to the tint ramp. I'm going to decrease the uh, darkness a little bit. I'm actually going to move that into the middle there. And then I'm going to make the sort of start completely white again. We can kind of move this. Move this around. Okay, so I think that the detail that that's capturing is maybe a little bit too high frequency at the moment. So I'm going to go back to the mask by feature, try setting it back to linear. I'm going to try decreasing brightness a bit further. I'm just going to slide this around, see what kind of details we can pick out. So people, you know, we typically use uh, occlusion calculations for lighting, uh, but it actually also works really well as a kind of just a general um, sort of indication of like where where is more sheltered on the terrain uh, versus where is more exposed um, and where is maybe collecting more moisture and it's more damp. So it works really well uh, in this kind of context uh, where you just want to do some kind of color grading uh, across the terrain. So I'm just going to try and wiggle these sliders one by one and find the one that clicks for me. So I think I think it was probably smooth. I should go for <clears throat> yeah, I think I was having the most luck when it was uh, when I was controlling it inside this 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 ramp here. The tint itself. I think that maybe it's getting a bit too dark is the problem. Okay, smooth is pretty nice. I think, yeah, yeah, it starts to feel quite good. Yep, before and after. Uh, it's probably a bit strong, so it's before and after once more. Yeah, okay, quite like that. And uh, then I'm going to do one more. I feel tint, somewhat, somewhat similar. Do one more. Feel mask by feature. And this one is instead going to pump up the brightness. Um, so it's going to start on one, and then the second value of the ramp is going to be two. Okay, so now that's pretty extreme. So we just need to make sure that the mask is kind of appropriate. So I don't want to mask by slope. I do want to mask by curvature. Let's see what that gives us. Okay, you can see that's adding in some really nice fidelity kind of break up there. 
but probably a bit too much at this stage. Okay, so that's without and that's with. But I'm going to go to the tint and then I just have a nice global strength controller. Okay, so that's the uh, the process uh, that we used on Project Pegasus to add detail to our terrain, sort of beautify it, uh, and also to kind of author a global color texture at the sa same time. Uh, we actually used the global color texture inside of our material, inside of Unreal. Uh, you don't have to, you can just use this as a kind of reference uh, or an inspiration for the way in which you're going to then go and do the texturing later. And uh, in any case, all of these masks that we've created in order to do this texturing will definitely be useful when it comes to defining how we are going to apply different materials to our terrain. So I'm just going to put down a height field visualize one last time. I'm going to remove all tinting. Okay, so we can see this is the uh, the terrain that we ended up with, uh, with some nice kind of uh, interesting detail uh, that uh, wasn't present uh, and would be very hard to introduce uh, with purely procedural methods. And if we just if I just go ahead and grab the source and do a quick little comparison side by side, you can see that we've definitely introduced a lot of detail uh, that. Uh, kind of adds to that uh, sort of realism and uh, makes the terrain as a whole feel a lot more kind of impressive, I guess, and natural. So <clears throat> in uh, future workshops, uh, we're going to look at uh, how we actually take those masks and uh, turn them into uh, an ID map that we take into Unreal to do the texturing for the material with the material. And we're also going to be looking at how do we actually add more procedural detailing uh, on top of this uh, texture work that we've done so that it all kind of stick, sticks together a little bit better, feels more cohesive, and things like roads as well, uh, sort of turning it into more of an actual game-ready environment. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.